four days minimum times 19 minutes. That is your goal. And if you can do that, you're gonna get so much proven scientific benefit. Welcome back, everybody. Glad to have you here today on the latest Cabral Concept. This is episode 2701. If you want the three big takeaways, as well as all the different resources and helpful links, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2701. All right, today's topic of the day is how sauna and heat shock proteins, also known as HSPs, kill off zombie cells. So we're gonna go over today, if you've never heard about heat shock proteins before, what they are, they're a little bit of a misnomer calling them heat shock because people refer to them only in relation to sauna. I wanna share with you why they're actually produced in other forms of activity as well, uh, how they get activated, how we can use them to our advantage and get rid of these things that are growing inside of our body in terms of number called zombie cells and how those zombie cells are leading to more inflammation more free radical damage, and actually faster aging. All right, let's dive right in. Again, if you don't know what heat shock proteins are, that's okay, you're in the right place. Uh, what I wanna share with you is this. Heat shock proteins, about 60 years ago or so, they were discovered, and they're referred to always as HSPs. So oftentimes, when you might be reading some of the research, you see HSP 60, HSP 70, HSP90, those are all very widely studied forms of heat shock proteins. Okay, well, what are they? Whenever our body is under stress. Now, one of the ways they were first discovered was with heat. So if our body's under stress, let's say due to heat, maybe it's 110 degrees out. Maybe we've been outside under UV light, like the sun, for some time. Or maybe we are in a sauna. All of those things are actually thermic factors or hyperthermic, that just means high temperature factors that actually causes these specific proteins, so HSPs, heat shock proteins, are proteins that are created as a result of a hermetic stressor. That basically means our body under stress creating these proteins that do what? Well, they really help with the damage. That's what they're there for. So what they do is they help to fold proteins properly and damaged proteins, they help to refold those damaged proteins. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's say that your skin cells starts to break down. There's inflammation from getting too much sun, sunburn, let's say, or even a tan. So then what do we look at? Okay, those heat shock proteins are going to go to work helping to properly rebuild those skin cells, right? What's another one? Well, let's say we get an injury, right? So the body gets a cut or a wound or something like that. Heat shock proteins can develop outside of even heat, right? To be able to properly rebuild that damaged tissue. So that's how well that they work. The body needs to be producing these and the only way they're produced is actually stress in the body. So I have a podcast. I'll try to link back to it. It is on hermetic stressors. That's the name of the show. We'll link it up today at episode 2701. Why this is important is that everything that can be good for us can also be bad for us when it's overdone. And there's a lot to do with bioindividuality. That's why I talk so much about there is no all for one. So for individuals, you know, eating a lot of vegetables is absolutely from, is absolutely fantastic. You know, provides a little hermetic stress. Paul provides all those polyphenols, amazing for the body, even helps with those zombie cells that we were talking about. Well, if you're not used to eating any vegetables or maybe a cup a day, if you were to go to four cups a day, that's a huge, right, right, we're basically quadrupling what we're typically used to, that's a problem. Think about like quadrupling the length of time you could run. Like that's gonna be really damaging. You may end up with shin splints or you know pulling a hamstring or whatever it might be, right? So, okay, you can run a half mile and then you force yourself to run two miles. So that's, that's not ideal, right? We need to work up to that. Same with exercising. You're not doing any exercising now. You get in the gym, instead of doing one set, you do four sets you know, for every exercise. Just, it's unnecessary, right? So what we need to do is build up our hermetic stressors. But it seems, it's what the literature shows, the more we slowly build up the hermetic stressors, only to the point where our body can repair, we do amazing things for our body. And that's why sauna is being proven over and over and over to be so fundamentally important for overall health and longevity. So I've talked about before the cardiovascular element to sauna. It literally will get your heart rate up 
to 110, 120 and above. So you're already in zone two, maybe even zone three cardio. So you're doing a cardio workout while seated in a sauna. It, it's that legitimate. I've even looked at, because I wear a uh, watch that will track my heart rate as well. So I can look at myself at the beach and I can see that my heart rate's at 95 beats per minute just sitting there. Why? I'm under the sun, I'm getting hot, it's a stress on the body, right? As long as I don't overdo that, it can be positive for my body, as long as I can recover that night, right? So that's what's really important. All right, so heat shock proteins, they are expressed with heat, we know that, right? With UV light, we've talked about that, sunlight, or maybe even potentially um, other rays as well, like let's talk about maybe red light, maybe. I don't think that there's enough damage through red light, so I don't know that that's gonna be specifically as uh, fruitful in getting the results that you're looking for. Red light's great for other things. Um, UV light, that, that's the main one, so I won't try to come up with another one for that. That's, that's the absolute best way, getting safe exposure to sunlight, um, the heat that we spoke about, but also cold, right? So I talk about who cold is good for, and who cold is not good for, and the best types of cold exposure. Those are two different podcasts. I'll link those up today as well at 2701. So those are the main and safest ways, but other ways is simply through exercise as well. Now, using something called um, escalating density principles or what's called um, the SAD principle, SAD principle, specific adaptation to impose demands. It's where I talked about before. If you're not used to exercising, you do one set. Okay, you get used to that, then you do two sets. You get used to that, then you do three sets, you know, of a given exercise. And then that increases what? Well, it increases a hermetic stressor on the body. This is also one of those areas that people believe, um, although it, you know, it's proven in the contrary with cancer, right? So more than two drinks a week for women and more than three drinks a week for men increases uh, what seems to be cancer and maybe even all-cause mortality. However, we look then at a lot of the blue zones and we say, okay, blue zones, not all, like not all of them, that's for sure. Like you can definitely point to certain um, cultures that didn't. You know, they, they had what would be the equivalent to one glass of wine for you know Americans, like a six ounce pour, where they might be pouring three ounces at a time and have two. But there's obviously ethanol, right, and alcohol. And ethanol, at least at low dose, has been shown to be a hermetic stressor. I'm not recommending go out and, and drink an alcohol. I actually don't believe there's enough benefit to outweigh the risk because you can get your hermetic stressors from sauna, from you know, safe sun exposure, et cetera. So I would be careful with that one. But again, I like to stay impartial and just share with you at least some theories as to how this might be um, very helpful. Okay, so those are how heat shock proteins occur. How do they then help with this thing called zombie cells? And why do you care about zombie cells? Well, zombie cells is a fun name for what are called senescent cells. And there are these things called senolytics. Senolytics are being developed or at least talked about and researched to help decrease zombie cells. Because zombie cells are cells that basically refuse to die. So all cells in the body, and I, I actually have a podcast on this as well, have a specific timeline for how long they live. And then through natural apoptosis, through naturally programmed cell death, let's just take a red blood cell, it tells itself, or it's programmed, that after a certain parameter, it's between 90 and 120 days, right? That's, that's the lifeline. That after that, it uh, essentially implodes, breaks down white blood cells, the body cleans it up, mac macrophages, et cetera, and then it gets sweeped out through the body, right? Through the immune system. So then these some cells in the body just never go through that apoptosis. They never go through the programmed cell death. Now, we know some of those are cancer, right? but senescent cells are not cancer. They, I don't wanna say they're harmless, but they are cells that float around like zombies through the body. These cells though do create inflammation and they do create uh, free radical damage and what's referred to as inflammation. The more senescent cells you have under the skin, the more the skin ages. It wrinkles, Collagen breaks down because it affects all the tissue around it, right? So you can be taking in good collagen, you can be taking in vitamin C and zinc and all these great things for your skin, but what if you have a buildup of senescent cells? So how heat shock proteins work is they help to clean out a greater amount of senescent cells. So between your intermittent fasting, your sauna or heat-based therapy for the heat shock proteins, your exercise, and then good nutritional supplements like I've talked about before, such as quercetin, 
at a, at a healthy amount, right? Um, and then even skincare products, as I've referenced before, we'll link it up today, one product that's used as an, a, a natural herbal moisturizer, plus it has OS1 um, as a natural anti-senolytic, uh, all have been shown to be helpful with senescent cells. So when we start to combine, again, these things have been known for thousands of years, right? Sauna has been around for thousands of years. I talk about that in the rain barrel effect. Did they know that it was doing all of these things with senescent cells? Probably not. But they knew that it was helping to regenerate the body, to detox the body, and overall begin to heal. And it helps make the body stronger. That's such a big part of it, right? So like a hermetic stressor is, it's, it goes back to the adage, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now, you don't want to push it too much too fast, especially with pe people dealing with a real health issue right now. But if you can continue to work up slowly but surely, then you can actually improve the body's resilience and resistance. So you improve the protein restructuring capability, heat shock proteins, right? And improve the overall immune system, and you're better able to adapt to inflammation and modulating inflammation. So if we're talking about sauna, let's talk about sauna as the only modality here today, because that was the topic of today's show. The research shows very definitively four to seven times a week. The dry finished sauna at around 175 to 180 degrees for 19 minutes to 20 minutes. And I've got a, a popular show called 19 Minutes um, of This, Reduces All-Cause Mortality. We'll link that up as well. That's an amazing show. Uh, great, great research, right? The show is not amazing. The research is amazing that, that goes into that show. And then if you're doing infrared sauna, you'll probably want to go in for 30 minutes to 40 minutes. So you'll do it a little bit lo longer, but your temperature will be lower. Typically, 140 degrees, maybe 150 degrees. You stay in a little bit longer, you get different benefits, and the infrared sauna may have the same benefit without the heat even being as high because the body is actually heating up internally rather than from the external ambient temperature. So really interesting. More research needs to be done on that, no doubt about it, but I wanted to share that with you. The last way is using either a um, sauna blanket or a PEMF mat. But what you want to do is you want to really cover yourself, if, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to cover yourself if you're on that PEMF mat um, with a towel, a, um, like a foil-based blanket. You want to keep the heat in. So you get the anti-inflammatory benefits of the PEMF, you get the heat benefits, and that heat is being kind of um, cocooned in. So why do I mention all those things? Because whatever you have will enable you four to seven days a week to get these benefits. So four days minimum times 19 minutes. That is your goal, and if you can do that, you're gonna get so much proven scientific benefit. So I will link up always my favorite sauna-based resources. I've got a lot of them. Uh, I'll link up my PMF resource today. A lot of links at stephencabral.com slash 2701. And then of course, if you ever wanna see all the products we use in our practice from just amazing companies around the world that I use with myself, my family, and our private practice as well uh, at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. Do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.